once you awaken from your sleep time, more of the time than not, your body has received the benefits of that. Your body has been restored to some degree. It has been made to rest. It has been healed by one property or another as much as the soul has been able to bring in terms of the timeless filaments of light. And the thinner the dimensions or the layers are between the body, between that which is most dense, the more the body will be able to restore itself or the more quickly. The more layered the mind is, littered is another way to put it, the more difficult it is for the body to restore itself either completely or in ways that can be seen as a vast improvement. And so if you continually awaken, for instance, and are tired, I am still tired, and I am still tired, and I am still tired, it would be well to investigate for yourself how open the doors to your beliefs are, your patterns, your thoughts. Are you truly willing to open these, change these, allow the fresh air or the fresh and exchanging wisdom to come through? Is your being transcendent, able to leave behind the old in favor of the new? Or must it have all things defined by brain? Here we do not criticize brain, for it carries a very fine function, and in essence it has been overtaxed for several generations going now. But instead we put to mind that it can access much, much more than it does now, in terms of where the body is, let us then take a general assessment of your being as it is in terms of physical attributes. You are now considered a physical human being. And so in general, we will take an average human reading across the board, across all continents, across all genetic lines, all heredities, and simply for the purpose of discussion without going into the detail of each genetic organism. The human organism itself, taken from only the physical perspective, is only in average condition. It has suffered certain shocks. It has suffered certain setbacks that it has not improved upon or transcended. One of these is a long-standing concern, and it is simply this, that the human being does not know its origin. It does not know its true parenting, its true heritage, it does not understand or remember its journey in the stars. And because it is seen as separate from the soul itself, the physical being is somewhat caught, caught in the earth plane, belonging to the third dimension. It will live, it will die. It has a life span. Every thought, every experience has a beginning and an end. And this has limited the human being quite a bit so that it cannot truly grow as it is currently organized. Instead, it continues only to recycle itself. It makes what small improvements it can and then it returns itself earth to earth or dust to dust and then here and there it will come and pick up a next body with the slight genetic improvements. But along with the genetic improvements, there are many aspects that have not improved upon. And without wisdom to advance the human being, the human species, these particular fears and concerns and historical perspectives have taken their toll upon the body. Another physical toll taken to the body is that 
it has been exposed for far too many eons of time to the ravages of war. Incarnation after incarnation upon a planet that has warred against itself. A humanity, one family in truth, but that has made war upon itself. And in the name of God, notwithstanding, in the name of religion, in the name of mediocrity. And so the thought that life itself is very tenuous, that at any moment it may come to an end, be it from a bomb or another weapon or the decisions made by others, well, that has taken its toll upon the body so that a part of it has atrophied. The part of it, the part of the energetic field that is the body, has shrunk. And if you like, you may visualize it a little bit like a well-being of middle age. And then you begin to see them advance in age. And then you begin to see the ravages of the stresses, perhaps of a complicated life or a burdened life. And when you next visit this being, they seem a little bit beaten by life, a little bit smaller, a little bit shrunken. Well, your energetic field has suffered such toll as well over eons of time. And so your auric field is not as grand and expansive as it once was. Now it is more guarded. Now it is more dense. It is more protected. It is more careful. It is more tenuous, and it is not as easy to share itself openly as another. It is testing the waters of what it eats or does. And so here we have then the physical body then, a little bit less capable, a little bit less sure of itself. This generation to whom I now address these words is less certain of its own longevity, its own ability to know that there will be a next and a next and a next generation than any other. Those who hear these words believe in some part of themselves that this could, for one reason or another, be the last of the human race or the one in which it certainly is capable of doing itself, its world and its planet in. This is newer than for other generations that did not have quite this as a possibility. Until now, other generations believed that the next generation and the one after that would make improvements to the world, would make the world a better place to live. These generations do not necessarily agree with that. Now, of course, do remember that the words that are being spoken here are a general assessment of the average human species. We are not here, perhaps, addressing these words to those that hear them and consider themselves more expansive in their thoughts and their ideals. And so the current condition, then, of the human is that it is stressed. Brain is also stressed, because brain now sees that it has tried many different things and experiences and beliefs and patterns, and that it has somehow not emerged or not assisted truly. And so brain feels somewhat responsible for your awareness, a little bit like a parent would be responsible for you into adulthood, although not truly. And so brain continues to reach for what to do or what to think or what to offer. But it has become overly conditioned. Overly conditioned for what it believes that it is, what it believes that life is capable of. It has learned a great deal about itself and its world, but now it has not gone further. It has found itself, instead of looping to the exterior, to the stars as it would be, it loops to the interior, hoping to find a solution 
but within a finite world or a finite system of thought. Because of this, time is running out for the human being. Literally so. Time is running out. Brain believes in time. Brain then accesses time or time cycles. And as the aura shrinks, time then begins also to cave in upon itself so that a day does not seem to last as long as a day lasted before. The thoughts and energies that direct a day, well, it is not quite enough energy to last throughout the day. One is tired before the day comes to an end or before all of the day's activities can be performed. And so time itself, clock and calendar is time, is running out. But not for all. It is simply running out for this version of humanity. Humanity, as you know it now, is running out the clock, moving to the end of time, to the very edges of time. And it will seem to brain that the mind, the body, the human life could go over the edge at any moment. And you see the many fine minds, many fine human beings that do exactly that. They are going over the edge. They are losing their mind. Some are losing their bodies. Some are losing the functions of their bodies. And why? And how to regain that again with certain filaments of light, with certain holographic projections, the health of many could be restored. And that is coming so that we do not put this forward as a hopeless story. No, here we are giving a common assessment of the moment, of what has brought you to this moment, and of what will carry you beyond this moment. So let us be clear in our journey together. As time continues to run out for this version of the human vehicle, the body begins to know this. Body responds to the impulses, the electrical impulses of the brain, and so those that believe, because of the belief systems of the brain, that time is running out, then also believe that time is running out for the body. Out comes the belief system that the body is limited, that the experiences of the body are now short, time is short, and so the being begins to dream less, it begins to ask for less filaments of light from the soul, if after all time is less, why? draw to yourself much more in terms of experiences that you would not be able to live out. And so without asking or demanding more from the soul, all other aspects of brain and body begin to atrophy. And now you have the body's ability to begin to create a cancer. A cancer is no more than a thought that duplicates itself and duplicates itself and duplicates itself again but goes nowhere and so it builds and builds and builds upon itself but it is the same thought and because it is a thought that began in error for instance that all hope is lost or that time is running out or like that then eventually that thought that continues to run itself again and again creates a physical image. It creates something in its likeness that says in a different language the same thing. And so the body then, the energetic field, the echo of brain and thought and experience, if it is no longer in the process of discovering the meaning of life, then, in essence, brain 
tells it to do the opposite, to begin the process of shutting down life. And that is when cancer begins to spread. Again, one is either spreading life and the discovery of more life and more experience, or one is not. One can be temporarily static in that respect, but not for very long. It is a little bit like treading water. You can tread water and more than likely hope to be rescued. But if you are not rescued within a certain amount of time, the body will expire its ability to tread water. And it is the same with the cells that are produced during times of either great stress or instability or overly confidence in belief systems or like that. In times where creativity is not present and not present for a very long time. Now, this production of cancer-like cells until the body literally terminates itself or becomes a terminal illness, as they are called, this also is running out. If time is running out, and it is, it is running out for all things, including these belief systems. And so, on the good news horizon, all types of cancer will be eradicated. And it will be in a matter of short generations that this begins as well. It will not be all at once. It is not as a scientific discovery that says, Oh, here is the way, and take one of these and two of those, and it will be all better. It will not be that. But there will be a process of reversal. It is a thought process of reversal. And there will be certain therapies, light therapies, light showers, that will begin to reverse the process for the mind. You know, you can hypnotize the mind to believe almost anything. Now, if you can also hypnotize or retrain the mind to retrain the body that is what is necessary and so in order to reverse these processes brain must access a greater collective mind where there are greater possibilities than the set of reference books that the brain uses for its beliefs and such and once mind begins to be activated then mind can draw to itself light, packets, filaments, experiences, and these will translate to a variety of different technologies. And these technologies will then bring light, a different kind of light that is not exactly what the soul uses, but the mind will use these to bridge several spans of light and dimensions to begin to restructure itself. This is in the process of taking place now. Now, if it is possible, and I tell you that it is, for organs to restructure themselves or remake themselves in a more healthful image, why might that be? How would they be able to do that? What will they use as an example to eradicate their diseases or to make the mind-body connection? Well, in essence, they will do so out of the realm of time. And this will come about as well from a spiritual component. And here we will need, and it will come about, for science and spirituality to come together. Once the discovery is made that the field of energy that surrounds the body is the body, then it will be seen that these fields of energy are also the organs of the body, are also the thoughts of the brain, are also that part of humanity that has hope 
and has faith and has desire these will then become measurable they will be seen as the fields of energy that they are and that field of energy will then be explanation that is sufficient at least a beginning for those who study and teach theology and other thoughts that can be transferred it will also be measured that not only brain influenced thoughts affect the body but that yes heart influenced thoughts affect not only the body but the great field of energy that is the body then there will be the marrying together of a variety of fields of thought including philosophy and science and theology or religion or spirituality or what you will term it this comes as a beginning a few generations from now and even the beginning stages of it can be seen and felt now but not until science brings about its acknowledgement for you do live now in the age of science and technology and so the greater part of it must come from that all of this will bring about changes in what the human being is and then the general assessment that i have given of the average human being well that will be seen as if it can be improved upon a great deal and fairly easily how will some of these advances come about well you will begin to see that studies are beginning to come forward that will offer at least these possibilities these studies are already well funded they are very attractive to those who participate in them and they are well funded in certain ways by your governmental agencies and by other private agencies and private investors or donors as you may think of them there are projects then under a variety of names and code names and these are funded in such a way as it is very difficult to trace who has contributed or what their own main purpose is in that contribution does it matter in this moment that some of those that have contributed to these projects may not have the highest and the best in mind as far as humanity is concerned no not really it will all come out in the wash as they say for now it matters only that these projects do go forward and so i will tell you that there are several and many in fact laboratories and such spread round the world and even some of those that are being studied through space that take into consideration the needs of the future human being what longevity it will need what kind of health it will need to maintain and how it will maintain that health from what source and from what resource some of the funding for these great projects comes from some of your very powerful insurance companies pharmaceutical companies governmental and military installations and several that simply choose out of their own interest selfish interest as it would be to remain secret and private matters not once some of these results are released and they will be released little by little in order not to be of shock to humanity but there will be a progressive releasing of information and it will come via great funded studies by the time that these results are released 
It will be great universities and schools of thought that release them, so that they will see, be seen as being unbiased and truthful in every regard. Most of what is put forward will be truthful, even if it is not completely understood. And all the while, humanity's health will continue to evolve and improve. While all of that is taking place is a time that can be somewhat difficult for the human body. The human body is felt to be under attack, under attack from its own internal stresses. It is tired, it is depleted of energy, the food content and nutrition that it has received is not of great quality and so again the stress that the body is bombarded with cannot recover the job the economy the decisions the family all of this will be seen to be aging the bodies prematurely and for a time there will be those that simply will be seen to have aged just that way a twenty-year-old man whose body appears to be that of a forty-year-old man a forty-year-old man who appears to be that of a sixty-year-old man and this will trouble those who insure your bodies quite a bit because all of their rating scenarios, for instance, have been based upon, well, a 20-year-old body's health being a 20-year-old body, and 40 is 40 and 60 is 60. After all, there are those considered actuaries that study this, and their studies will not make sense. And so, now, what will these great companies do? And what will humanity that is aging quickly and without true seeming reason do? And so already you are on the fringe of this. And it does not mean that it will apply to every being, but it will apply enough that it will be seen as a general trend. Of course, a good amount of it may be blamed upon a healthy or unhealthy lifestyle, that would be the first pointing of the finger. Next, the finger will point to the economies of the world and the stresses that humanity are under. Then, the finger will point elsewhere and then elsewhere. Eventually, it will land as well with the pharmaceutical industries and with those that have contaminated certain crops and on and on the finger-pointing campaigns will last quite a time. During that, those companies that insure your health will find that it is more and more difficult to do so. And so, during that time, during that phase, which is already beginning now, all manner of scenarios will be put forward. This is acceptable, but that is not. How much responsibility will these governing bodies place upon you? It is your body. Should you not be responsible for its care? If you have a 20-year-old body, it is up to you to maintain it as a 20-year-old body. If overnight it has turned an age to 40, it is not our fault. We cannot confirm it. We cannot regenerate it. We will not insure it. Or will they? And so, what goes on now in the halls of those who study this or fight for this, it will become even more so. And humanity, unfortunately, will come to depend even more upon the pharmaceutical industry. One pink one and one blue pill, and a green one in the afternoon, and a white one to awaken, and a yellow one to go to sleep with, and this one for the function of the liver, and the other for the other, and like that. And so, humanity cannot simply continue to alter its awareness or its physicality with such supplements, and so then will come those who will regulate this until it becomes overly regulated. 
only if it comes from the source, only if it is dispensed by prescription, only if it shows true and marked improvement, only if it costs this much, but not like that, and so great are the concerns that will be brought forward during this time as well. In the meantime, as with any other program, and humanity being somewhat childlike as it is, there are reward programs and incentives that it will respond to. Everything from trips to oases and vacation lands and paradises for those that can maintain their health within this range and the other for an entire year. There will be many such programs in the same way that there are popularized programs now for gymnasiums and health spas and facilities and like that. There will be certain incentivized programs brought about to maintain health or to create excellent health or to teach excellent health to others. Habits that are now tolerated and even taken for granted, they will come to be frowned upon quite a bit. And so those who overeat and overdrink and are habitually addicted to this or to that, well, they will be observed that much more carefully, and they will be ostracized in their own way during this time of great and important health campaigns. And so you will see a great many changes coming, and those that will do almost anything to enter that particular desirable range, whether it is possible for them to do so or not, they will work at it, lie for it, cheat for it, buy for it, trade for it, or what else may be asked of them in that. And so there will come about, out of necessity, and why not, certain formulas, brain formulas, that can undo certain beliefs. The area of the brain specifically known for habits, specifically known for addictions. Well, that has already been isolated. It has already been found where the brain, for instance, is addicted to gambling or addicted to the alcohol. And so these then will be fine-tuned so that there will be certain brain procedures that will liberate one from these particular addictions. At first they will seem somewhat dangerous, and there will be many that will not wish to undergo this. Who will trust it, after all? How will they say, and how do you know what little area of the brain, what little electro to touch here or to prod there? Oh, but you will see that they will indeed fine-tune it, and soon it will come to be no more than even those ocular eye surgeries that are already very commonplace now. In you go, out you go, all done. And they will be quite successful. Many of them will be, but others not. Here I will tell you that there will be certain aberrations and certain anomalies that will not be explained for some time to come. But that is another subject, and so perhaps we will leave that to the side. In terms of what your future health can be explored, or what can be brought forward for that, well, I will say that there are indeed experimental procedures and discoveries that will be brought forward, and here you will have in some ways your military to thank for this. After all, look at the poor dears. Many of these come back in rather poor condition, would you not agree? Either the mind has been shattered, or the body has been shattered, and in some cases both. These poor dears, being of a very vital and a very young age, would make excellent candidates for study, and of course they will. And again, there will be many that fund certain 
private enterprises that do not belong to the wing of the military, nor to the pharmaceuticals, nor to this or not to that, but as if a general fund that all of these contribute to, for they would all benefit in the process. And, of course, those who have been somewhat damaged in such a way would have less to lose than your average human, and so they will lend to themselves the support of these studies and a great deal of wonderful, humane discoveries will be made, how to repair this and understand the other and improve upon that, and little by little these will come forward, and those that receive the benefits of what is discovered and what is offered to them will become their spokes people, the living examples, and so brain will become altered in its belief system. It will be able to say, oh, so that is not the end of the line if this happens. Look, this can be repaired and that can be exchanged. This will have a great effect upon humanity because if one belief system is shattered, regarding the body, others can be as well. And along these lines, with not simply a transplantation of an organ, but literally one organ of the body can be made, asked to behave in a different way entirely, or to take on the function of another organ entirely, then the body will be seen to have a true intelligence. Imagine that you say to your neighbor, I must go elsewhere and I cannot be here. Can you cover for yourself and for me? And they say, well, yes, we will do our best. I have never done it before, but I will give it a good attempt. And it turns out to be successful, so that it is done again and then again. This same can be accomplished by the organs of the body, so that one can take control of another, not exactly perform all of the tasks in exactly the same way or in the same order, but the function, the function can be made to operate the same. The intelligence of one is also the intelligence of the other, because now they are not simply under the direction of brain and brain's belief systems. They come under the direction of mind and the ability of mind to seek another possibility, another idea. That did not work. Let's try this way. Let's try that way. And the more that the mind expands to consider other possibilities, the more that the body will be able to do the same. Other discoveries will come round about in other ways as well. For instance, there will be those that are made in space. The programs that will take humanity further and further into space, these will continue. As a matter of fact, they will be accelerated in the near future as well. And there will be many, many more who volunteer to take themselves off planet. Those who are terrestrial, and there will be those who are non-terrestrial, or off planet, or away beings, or what it will be. This, then, will bring about other changes, because, as you might imagine, the body, or any body, will respond differently to light, and to time, and to experience, and to choice differently in space, or placed upon another body, whether it is an asteroid, or a moon, or another planet. The response will be almost immediately differently. And because the means of monitoring all of these will be substantially improved by then, all that is applied or learned in space from the body becomes part of the human collective. It becomes part of human study and all that is human subject matter. And it will be found how to apply what takes place in space 
to that which takes place terrestrially as well. And so other improvements in humanity's genetics, humanity will evolve to become more of the space generation. This technology that most of you have now, or this particular line of human genetics, is the technological age. From the technological age will come the true space age, or the space generation, as will be the next few generations in terms of their discoveries. Not only their discoveries that they learn elsewhere and are able to bring to terrestrial Earth, but what they are able to take from terrestrial Earth to other planets, other worlds. And so comes the next version of humanity. And so you have seen a little now of your past and how you have come to be and to believe what you do about yourself, about your longevity, about your health and your ability to create or recreate it. And you have seen a little of the times in which you are living and the stresses and influences upon them and a little bit that we have explored, ventured into the future of the physical body. Now, in terms of suggestions or guidances of what you may do for your own physicality, I will say to you the following. Remember, your body is an energetic field that promotes and encourages experience. The purpose of your body is that it is to discover, create, and perform within the meaning of life by gathering to itself thoughts and experiences that are balancing, that are compassionate, that are open-ended and that are meant to be shared with others. This is what it means to be in service to humanity. It does not necessarily mean that you must make a place for yourself or an occupation for yourself in which you become a healer or a teacher. It means that part of your collective reality, that your collective consciousness is given to those who share your experiences with you, so that all will profit by them in a deeper and more profound discovery of the meaning or the mystery of life. The more that you do this, the better you will feel, literally so, physically, measurably so. The more that you make your life a search for an answer that involves all of life and all of humanity, the greater will be your health, your wisdom, your understanding, your merriment, and your peace. This is the purpose of life. The purpose of life is life itself. And there is very little difference in between mind and body and soul. They are different versions of the same. Your body is not as limited as what you believe it is. It is not here to suffer a certain amount of years upon the earth only to find itself back where it first began, only to do it again. There would be little purpose in this. And the director and the architect of life is a very creative, intelligent, and purposeful beingness. And indeed, without fail, without fault, you are made in this image, and all of the imagery 
that you create based upon that is to further that truth, in fact, to prove it, to make it so. And so dress yourself in the clothing of the day if you like, but remember as well to dress yourself in the filaments of light, those that are given by the soul. If you forget what it feels like to be dressed by the soul, take a moment to feel the warmth or brilliance of a golden light, whether it be that of the sun or that of an ordinary light bulb, if you will visualize it so. Let it dress you. While it is dressing you, feel yourself being enhanced by creativity, by an intelligence that is more pure, more profound, more experienced, more wise than what you have remembered in some time. Let it dress every part of you, your genetics to your outlook, your genes to your genes as it would be. So be it, sweet. The subject is well covered for the time being. Live well and in wellness. Until the next moment brings us together, we will celebrate this one as one.